Welcome to the start of phase two. Now the first lesson is just to familiarize you with the Google Forms environment. So if you've used this before, you can skip this video and go straight on to the next one. Google Forms will really make your life so much easier than doing it in Word. So if you have access to internet, then I can really, really recommend it. Basically what it is, is we make a form that's online. You can share the link to the form via any social media or instant messaging. People fill it in online and the, the answers or responses are automatically captured and saved for you in a spreadsheet format that you can simply download. So it really saves a ton of effort. So in order to be able to use Google Forms, you need a Gmail account. So step one is to just log into your Gmail account and then go over to the Google Apps Center and choose Drive. In Drive, you'll then go to New, More and choose Google Forms. Here you have a blank form which you can then start editing. First step will be to provide a suitable title. Make sure that the title is somehow related to your topic. Um, I'll, I'm going to make a silly one regarding the sky color. You'll see as I work in here, it actually gives me notifications at the top whether something I've just done is saved or not. So if I type in something, you'll see it says saving at the top, do you see? So um, once you've typed in the title over here, you can just go click there so that the file name is actually changed in Google Drive. This area that I started typing in now um, is the form description. This is where you will type in some form of introduction, just saying what your topic is about and why you want people to fill this in. Now, if you want to come back and work on this later, you don't have to do all of this in one session. You can just check that it says all the changes have been saved, close it. When you need to open it again, just log into Gmail again, follow the same process, go to Drive, and then you'll see it will fall under Quick Access because you've recently made it. If you don't find it over there, you can just go to the bottom here and look for the Google Form with the name that you specified. Let's start by looking at how we can customize the look of the form. We can go to the customize theme button over here, and that's where we can change the color, change the background color, even the font if you'd like. One can choose headers and all nice images. Just remember data usage for the people filling it in. So just be mindful of that. I'm not sure if it's always applicable or appropriate to use lots of graphics. But you'll see there's lots of pre-made headers over here that you can choose between and you can even upload your own photos if they are in the correct resolution. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. If you want to see what your form is going to look like when you send it to people, you can use the preview button. This shows you what it'll look like when they receive it. And when they click on submit, they will get a confirmation message. The confirmation message can be edited over here by settings and presentation. This is where you can change the confirmation message. Let's say, thanks for your help. Um, personally, I wouldn't show a link to submit another response because you don't want people to oh, fill it in twice. You actually want unique responses. All right, now let's have a look at how we can actually edit questions and add more questions. So the two items we're going to use most of the time will be adding questions and adding a title and description. If you want, you can add an image as well. And if it's a complicated topic that you maybe want to put a link to a video in, you can add a video as well. If you'd like, you can also add sections. Basically what that does is it puts, it separates the form into different pages. And now that the mark for it being all on one page has been removed, you are allowed to do this. But I'm just going to stick to questions and titles and description. So any question you add, you'll see it just comes up here, question, and you can put in the options at the bottom. So any question that I type in, let's say this is going to be number one and this is going to be number two, I can swap them around easily by using this drag button 
and just swap them around however I need them. If I supply a title as well, I can also drag this to the top. Let's just have a look at what it looks like by now. I need to preview again from scratch. You'll see that's what the title looks like. So you'll probably need to supply a title for all the personal questions and then the questions regarding your specific topic as well. Let's have a look at the type of questions one gets. So you'll type your actual question over here. And please use proper punctuation and capitalization. So start your sentences with a capital letter, end them with a question mark or a full stop if it's a statement. And just, yeah, use good spelling. Google is actually smart enough to often add suggestions to what you can type. Um, you are then more than welcome to click on these and it'll add them for you. Let's say I want to say the sky is blue. And I want options that says true or false. I'll just type on the first or click on the first one, type in true and press enter to get the next one and be able to type it myself. There's also an option to say add other. I just want to show you what that does. If I go to preview, you'll see other then has a line where people can type in their own option. Use this sparingly, but now and then if you can't think of all the possible solutions or all the kind of things they can recycle or something like that, then you can use that type. All right, so that's multiple choice. Check boxes allow people to choose more than one option. Please um, just be very careful if you use these. Obviously for true and false, that won't work because they need to choose one. Be careful when you use it. But if, these are, if it's appropriate, um, then you can use it. Just make sure to actually go to the options here at the bottom and say show description. Description is where you can enter additional instructions to questions, such as how many options they are allowed to choose. You also get a response validation, depending on the type of question you ask. For checkboxes, you can set how many they are allowed to choose. Let's just go back to short answer. You can use this for something like their age or their name, something like that. Um, and over here, you also have an option for response validation where you can say that they have to enter a number. That's a whole number, for example. You will not use the paragraph answer type for any questions because you won't be able to analyze the answers. So please use short answer very sparingly. It'll only be used for things like a name and a surname. Only closed questions, factual short answers. Paragraph not using it at all. Any kind of opinion questions has to be multiple choice or check boxes. Possibly drop down. I'll show you what that looks like now. Let's go back to multiple choice. That was true or false. And I just want to show you a drop down. Just looks a bit different. That's what it looks like. You'll see the difference between a drop down and a multiple choice is that you are not able to choose uh, other option where people can type in themselves. Personally, I think uh, the multiple choice is the best one to use rather than drop down, but just stick to whichever one you want to use. File upload you won't use. That's anyway only available in a specific domain. So like in uh, one organization, but you will definitely use a linear scale. So let's say how blue is the sky. Now, you don't need to put the scale description over here. You actually have a label where you can say not at all or very. Let's have a look at what this looks like. See how neat this is. They actually put the numbers for you plus the two labels at the end. Now, just a few notes when you use this. Please keep your labels short because if people see this on a mobile phone, it's often when the description is too long or the labels are too long, then it doesn't display neatly. The other thing is don't use the scale that's too high. So like 10 also doesn't display nicely on a mobile phone and try to use a scale that has even numbers. 
uneven numbers aren't great because people often just go for the middle option. Let me just show you. It's better if you use an uneven or an even number like six because then people have to sort of lean towards the one or lean towards the other. That's just a nice tip for setting questionnaires. You can then also use a multiple choice grid or a checkbox grid if you'd like. I wouldn't recommend these because you don't want too many answers. And then people will often want to use the date type for something like a date of birth. Now I just want to show you something regarding that. You'll see it automatically defaults to date because that is the normal way one would use it. Now the problem with this is I think just test it on someone's phone but a year or two ago we did this in class and a lot of people that we sent it to on their mobile phones weren't able to enter this as separate years, months or dates. Um, they had to actually use a, a calendar to scroll back to their birth date and that didn't work at all. So people just got frustrated and just put in any date. So what I actually recommend you do is to ask them their day of birth, month of birth and year of birth separately. This may sound like a lot of effort, but it actually can give you lots of marks in Excel later because you have to put the dates back together again and you get marks for that. So it's an easy way for people to fill it in using drop down lists and it can help you score lots of extra marks later. So you definitely don't have to fill in number one to 31 yourself. You can just use Excel to auto fill it and go and copy and paste the options. You'll see if I just click on option one, I can just press paste and it automatically goes all the way down. Now, if people get this, it's an easy one. They can just go and click over there. Please use the month in word format. So like January, not 01. And for the year, I would recommend starting around 1960 or 1970. And you don't really need to go much further than 2010, I'd say. I don't think you're going to ask very young learners to fill in your form. I don't think I've told you about required yet. This is something you can switch on to force people to fill in a question. If I switch this on, you'll see it actually shows me the star when something is required. Use this carefully. I'd say most questions actually need to be required. Here and there, if you have a follow up question, so like if yes, then what, what, what. Um, or you want to have them the name and surname, but it's optional. People can choose not to fill it in. Then you won't make it required. So just use that carefully. But most of the time you want to have it required so that people can't open the form and submit it without filling anything in. If you have a question that you don't want, like this one, I can just go and delete it. Now, let's have a look at testing this form. So when you're done with your questions and you're quite happy with it, you can then preview it and try filling it in yourself. So you can then just go through all the options and press submit. You'll see there's my custom confirmation message. And now if I go back to my form, you'll see it shows one response. That's how I can check how many people have filled in my form. Now it usually shows the responses in a graph format over here. And if I want it in Excel format, I'm going to go click here. Now, before we do that, I just want to show you two or three more things. Firstly, before you download your answers, please switch off the form so that people don't carry on filling it in. The other thing is if you tested it yourself and just filled it in with bogus answers, please go and delete the response before you create the Excel spreadsheet. That's very important. I'm not going to delete it just because I want to show you how to create the spreadsheet then. We then go and click on create spreadsheet. You'll see it gives me an option of what to name it. That's not really important right now. And then it opens for me in Google Sheets. You'll see the questions are then just put in at the top with the answers of everyone at the bottom. And I can then download this as a Microsoft Excel document. Now, last thing, how to send this to other people. If I click on send, I can send it to them by email like this, if I have the email addresses, or you can share it straight to Twitter or Facebook. 
But I think the one that most of you will use is sharing the link on any platform that you choose. Now you can just go and copy this long link or you can go shorten the URL, but it's still a bit long to type into WhatsApp. So I recommend using the site bit.ly bit.ly. You copy this link, the short or the long one. Sometimes the one works and the other one doesn't work. So just try one and if it doesn't work, try the other one. Copy, go here, paste it, and then just press shorten. I don't think it worked. Now this is one I tried earlier. Let's just go to shorten URL, copy. I'll show you what it looks like when it works. See, they, it regenerated and gave me a new one. That's actually a nice easy one. I can clearly see what the letters are. So then I can copy this and go paste it somewhere or I can just retype it into um, WhatsApp or whatever, wherever I want to share it. Just please take note that this is extremely case sensitive. So you need to be sure if something's uppercase or lowercase. And if you're not sure whether something's a letter or a number, you can just copy this and paste it in Word, change the font and then see which one it is. All right, you can then send that link to friends and family and you'll see their responses are collected over here. And when you're done, you simply collect the answers by using this spreadsheet feature. You'll see once you've created the spreadsheet the first time, you can just go view the responses in the sheet again afterwards and you can download it when you're ready.